Okay, chapter 18 is about anemias of defective DNA metabolism. Uh, many of these are going to be megaloblastic anemias uh, because they, what it is is they end up growing faster. The cytoplasm gets bigger more and more, but the nucleus isn't, isn't, replicating the way that it should so what we end up with for the most part are megaloblastic anemias so mega means large blast is where you know the it's the formation it's those bone marrow precursors that we're going to see okay and then there are some that are non-megaloblastic anemias that are still macrocytic because of the fact that it's something else going on and it's not well it's a precursor so um the root cause of megaloblastic anemia is that the dna is not being made properly and two key vitamins that we have are vitamin b12 which vitamin b12 is um, known as cobalamin um, and there's a whole bunch of um prefixes that go with that cobalamin so there's lots of different forms of cobalamin um but vitamin b12 is it can be hydroxycobalamin cyanocobalamin methylcobalamin um five prime deoxyadenosyl cobalamin um lots and lots of them so Vitamin B12 acts as a, as a coenzyme um, in two different reactions. Uh, the methyl mulatal coenzyme A gets changed to the succinyl coenzyme A. Um, and if we don't have enough B12, that doesn't happen. And then you have too much methyl malonic acid building up. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that it does is it transfers it moves a methyl group from the five prime methyl tetrahydrofolate to cysteine so it, when it, it moves that methyl group then it, the five prime methyl tetrahydrofolate becomes cysteine which then can turn into methionine um and so then again um if we have this happen then it's all well and good and everything turns out and we end up with methionine if not then you know we weird things happen um folate has a role in dna synthesis also um because folate is really a folic acid which becomes folinic acid and folinic acid is essential to the production of purines and if you know anything about the atc's g's and u's um purines your purines are adenine and guanine and of course they're very important in um the production of nucleotides which allow us to make our nucleic acids okay um there's other things it does too but you know easy crazy weirdness okay so um weird thing is that folate depends on vitamin b12 okay so we have this um interesting kind of catch 22 situation if you don't have enough b12 you're never going to be able to make the dna the right way anyway so the b12 coenzymes are essential for the role that folic acid plays in the whole dna synthesis step anyway right so um i'm going i'm just going to keep going because some of this is there there these slides are way too wordy for me 
Okay, so, um, what happens when we see a folic acid or a vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, typical things happen. Um, we will see your normal um, anemia symptoms. So you're going to have fatigue and weakness and shortness of breath. Some people have experienced GI issues or glossitis, which is swelling of the tongue. Um, vitamin B12 deficiency tends to take a lot longer for people to recognize because of the fact that there are, it, it's a more gradual thing. Um, for real signs or symptoms that would point to vitamin B12 to, to show up. Okay. Now folate, folate, that will happen a lot, a little bit faster. We're going to see signs and symptoms for that one pretty, pretty quickly. Um, because of the fact that if homocysteine builds up, then the homocysteine can lead to some other issues that will cause problems with the patient. And then they tend to point to folic acid. So, um, if for some reason, um, we have a vitamin B12 deficiency and years go by and we don't really understand what all is happening. Um, what you're going to see is you're going to see some neurological problems popping up and it could be something as easy as your, your motor skills are not as sharp as they used to be, or it could be that you start stumbling, um, or it could be. Um, it could be something as easy as you you see some neuropathies, um, or you could get depressed. Okay. And that's what happens typically with folic acid. Um, some people actually with the, with the buildup in homocysteine, um, they can start seeing, um, signs of severe depression or psychoses. Um, they can get peripheral neuropathies. So that, you know, you're not feeling your sensory perception is not the same as it would have been. Okay. If with pregnancy, um, if you don't get enough folate in, in your diet and you're not pro getting enough folate to um, the, de the developing child inside, uh, that baby could end up with a neural tube defect or spina bifida. Okay. So that's, those are some of the things that can happen. And with, um, with the two, with folate and with B12, there are a lot of different ways that we can get these vitamins into our systems. How can we, um, what are some of the things that can affect um, the deficiencies or the causes of deficiencies. So here, this is, um, where we begin our saga. Okay. So with folate, okay. Folate deficiency is actually kind of, it's really difficult, um, for some because folate is, in all kinds of foods. So that's what ubiquitous means. And ubiquitous means just about everywhere. Um, so it's in leafy greens, it's in our dried beans, it's in beef, it's in cereals, um, it's in oranges. The problem is that if you overcook it, it is a heat labile um, vitamin and it will be destroyed if you overcook. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> not taking in enough by having a very poor diet or not having your enriched cereals and things like that, that, that can be a problem. Um, sometimes people have increased need. So it, during pregnancy or during lactation. So when you're breastfeeding, um, 
you need excessive amounts of folate for the growing fetus and for the production of the milk. Um, infants and, and small children, younger children, need increased folate because they are growing rapidly. Right. Um, inc impaired absorption. So absorption, when we're talking about absorption, we're talking about the absorption of these, these vitamins through the GI tract. So you take it in in your diet, but it still has to get into the bloodstream because it's got to be absorbed into the intestinal cells and then from the intestinal cells get into the bloodstream. So um, impaired absorption could be that folate transporter um, protein. Maybe we don't have that, or maybe we have decreased amounts of it. Um, so if you guys remember ferroportin, being able to move the iron, okay, that could be one of the, the things. Instead of iron, we're talking about folate now. Okay. Um, Celiac disease, of course, could it could cause problems because that can cause like big plaques to form where the intestinal, excuse me, intestinal tissues um get like scarred. Okay, irritable bowel syndrome, too much uh, too much irritation and inflammation can cause a lack of absorption to happen, um, so that the cilia are not actually um free and they're jammed together and not able to do their job um impaired use so a lot of times medications can cause the body to do weird things and not be able to use the vitamins the way that they normally would so a lot of them are um Anti-neoplastic, so those are cancer drugs, um, anti-seizure drugs, antibacterials, so some of the antibiotics that we take, okay. Um, and then, of course, excessive loss. Um, kidneys lose folate, but not typically a lot of folate in a day. So usually it's not the kidney's fault that we're losing the, the folate. Unless, of course, the kidneys are long, no longer functioning. And then we have to go on dialysis, and with the renal dialysis, what they en what ends up happening is that uh, the dialysis is removing too much folate. So then we have to replenish that folate. Okay. With B twelve, um, B twelve can typically be found in dairy and eggs and fish and self shell fish, not selfish shell fish, liver. Um, so basically, as long as you're not a vegan, then you should be able to get adequate amounts of vitamin B12. Um, again, there is that increased need during pregnancy and lactation and it growth when you're small, when you're infant or young child, children. Um, impaired absorption can happen in a lot of different ways. Okay, so... Um, if you can't get the B12 from the proteins that are in that you have just taken in in your diet, um, a lot of times that can be because you don't have the acidity in the gastric fluids. So your stomach acid is not acidic enough. And part of what causes the acidity or primarily what causes the acidity are the, the um, cells in the stomach that create and produce um, hydrochloric acid. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, that's one cause. Here's another cause that we can't get the B12 from uh, not the food protein now but from the carrier protein that is running all around. Um, and that is that we aren't making enough trypsin. Oh, right. Sorry. In the stomach, we could also have a decrease in, in pepsin, which is an enzyme. Okay. Um, but a decrease in trypsin would not allow it to be released from the carrier protein that it gets, that's it, holding it in the intestine 
Um, the B12 then gets attached from the haptocore, hap, hap, okay, haptocorin. Um, it gets released from there and it gets attached to intrinsic factor. And if we don't have enough intrinsic factor, factor which is also made by those parietal cells of the stomach, uh, then we're not going to be able to absorb it either because technically it has to be bound to the intrinsic factor because we've got this um, membrane protein that will only take it in if it's attached to the intrinsic factor. So we have some really strange, weird things that can happen here. Okay. So... <sighs> The absorption and transport, if we don't have the, the receptors to be able to bind that intrinsic factor to come in, or we don't have enough intrinsic factor, um, if we don't have the parietal cells aren't working properly, like there's a whole bunch of things that can happen that can cause this. Okay. Um, but there are multiple, I told you earlier that there were multiple types of cobalamin um holo trans cobalamin is the active form of vitamin b12 so unless it can go through all the little steps to become holo trans cobalamin it will never actually be in the active form where our bodies can use it anyway so it's it's got to go through multiple transformations to get to this point and your book covers it greatly it's it's wonderful stuff but if it's if it doesn't get there we can't use it anyway um and this is this one's kind of interesting um diphilbothrium latum is a fresh water fish tapeworm so if you do fishing in lakes and rivers and and ponds and stuff um diphilbothrium latum is a tapeworm that you can get from not eating the fish cooked 100%. Um, and then that steals the vitamin B12. Okay. H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, is a corkscrew shaped um, bacterium. And one of the things that it does is it actually destroys the parietal cells that are in the stomach lining. So that will take out that hydrochloric acid and it'll take out the um, uh, intrinsic factor. So that has a huge, huge deal when it comes to uh, if you have H. pylori infection. Plus, they also can cause gastric ulcers. So, all right. So how do how do we diagnose either of these things um well first and foremost we're going to do a cbc and with the cbc i hope that we also get a reticulocyte count um so on the cbc of course we're going to see uh well i hope to see a decreased h and h okay so your hemoglobin and hematocrit are going to be decreased um you will probably with at least with megaloblastic anemias you're going to see a decreased white cell red cell platelet all three of them are going to be decreased it's going to be pancytopenia all the cells are going to be decreased and the reason for that is because we're having a problem with dna synthesis without making dna we're not going to be able to make all those cells okay so your mcv will be elevated and your rdw will be elevated because we're going to have a weird a whole bunch of different shapes of of or and sizes of red cells um most of the time you're going to see some sort of ovalocyte um and you might see some hyper segmented neutrophils and why would the hyper why would the neutrophils be hyper segmented because the dna synthesis is all wonky so that means it's going to make for a weird nucleus okay so so the sorry i got interrupted so um retic of course is going to be low 
oh, the hyperseg rule is that 5% of the population, so 5% have at least five segments to them, or you have one percent or one that has six segs so even if there are five um even if there's five segments to the nucleus if there's more than five percent of them that have that then we can still say that it's hyper segmented uh we typically try and go with the six because it would be really hard to figure out how what percent of the neutrophils actually have more than five. Now, if all of them have five, that makes it a lot easier, but that doesn't typically happen. Okay. Um, so you're going to see uh, some ovalocytes. You might see some, some dacrocytes, the teardrops. Okay. Um, and that has to do with the way that the, the nucleus is removed. Um, you might see a nuclear red here or there. How jolly body, maybe because of that whole DNA that's left behind. Um, and yes, you're going to end up having to do a manual diff on these things anyway. Um, what you can see and what we might see is that there will be, you may see some homolysis. And with homolysis, you're going to see an increase in the bilirubin. Okay. And you're going to see an increase in the lactate dehydrogenase. And the LDH comes from um the red cells from being lysed from the red cells themselves okay <clears throat> when we see when we're looking at bone marrow okay um you're gonna see megaloblastic changes which means that you're gonna see decreases in the amount of cells that are in there so the cellularity is gonna is gonna be hypocellularity um when if we are looking at specifically at b12 and folate levels they're both going to be decreased they're going to be decreased either or or both maybe um the methylmalonic acid might be increased the homocysteine might be increased depending on whether or not it's a b12 deficiency or not okay and <clears throat> typically we don't look at gastric stuff to look at hydrochloric acid levels and stuff like that until unless it's way late okay so if we can't make a diagnosis and we're still wavering that's going to be one of the last things that we're going to end up looking at okay um holotranscobalamin look for that to see if we have the metabolically active form of the vitamin b12 so we might still have the vitamin b12 levels that are normal but we don't have the active form then we have a problem Look for antibodies to intrinsic factor or to the parietal cells. Um, might do a serum gastrin level to see what's going on with the stomach. Okay. Um, and we may need to look for that uh, diphelbothrium latum fish tapeworm uh, that is a parasite. So we may have to look in the stool for uh, the eggs to be able to diagnose that okay um this is an extremely complex chart um but if you remember that methylmalonic acid and homocysteine levels um are associated with b12 okay um if it's only, only homocysteine, it's typically folate, okay, but methylmalonic acid increased vitamin B12, methylmalonic, methylmalonic acid and homocysteine increased B12, um, and then if both of them are normal, nope, mm -mm, it's, that's not happening. Neither one of them are, are the issue, okay, so that's that's how we go and we move through this very very weird x flow chart i hate flow charts it'd be different if they had 
colored pathways that go one way or there is another but it they mm, they try to make it all look the same i don't like that um so if we have normal stuff happening okay um we still have to look at could this possibly be pernicious anemia um and pernicious anemia is is kind of a little different than just plain old megaloblastic anemia um so with the pernicious anemia which is typically a a macrocytic it is a macrocytic non megaloblastic anemia usually okay this is this is the one where we have um no i lied that's pernicious anemia is the intrinsic factor thing so pernicious anemia is is autoimmune um and what it is is we have a a problem with the um intrinsic factor and because the intrinsic factor is not available that means that we then we end up with the vitamin b12 deficiency so what actually ends up happening is that there are um the t cells attack um the parietal cells that uh are that have that transporter in them that allow for the um intrinsic factor and the hydrochloric acid to to be produced so what will happen is that we don't have the intrinsic factor and then we end up with very a very 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 similar um picture of the whole vitamin b12 deficiency but we won't have the methylmalonic acid that's building up and, and and stuff like that it's it gets a little interesting okay so chapter 18 um is pretty much all about the uh b12 and folate and what could be a problem with this um so that is as much as we get now there are some anemias that you'll see some large cells in large red cells um that's where we can see those ovalocytes and we're going to see the hypersags um but <clears throat> sometimes it's just because they have something else going on so it could be a liver disease it could be alcoholism um it could be because the bone marrow itself is failing so most mostly what chapter 18 is all about is the b12s folates um you need to understand the methylmalonic acid intrinsic factor parietal cells you you like the key things um not so much um so if i if i don't eat cereal which deficiency am i gonna no that's not it um we need you need to know which one is going to cause what problems where 